today I just want to talk about a lot of things. First and foremost, in the last week or so, the, the Dutch guitarist, which is famous, famous to me anyway, at least for the last 48 years, um, is um, none other than the 78-year-old Jan Ackerman, of, uh, who gained fame with his band, Focus, and especially on these concerts and this album, uh, Focus at the Rainbow. So, a friend of mine gifted me this album back in uh, 1977, because he bought two copies at a pawn shop, very cheap, and he gifted one to me, and uh, you can see I even wrote my name in it at the time, because he left his album at my house for quite a while, because I had a good stereo set, so he used to play it at my place. So if you're not familiar with the album, I urge you to check it out. Uh, the most unique album cover design, I find, which is classic of um, the, the early 70s. And then you can check this all out on YouTube, obviously, and um, released by Polydor. And there's uh, Jan Ackerman, I think you can see him there on the guitar. And uh, some of the favorite songs on your, of mine are, and I urge you to check it out, is um, Focus 2 and Focus 3. And then there's that very 70s sounding number, Sylvia, written by the uh, keyboardist Thais van Veer. But, um, for those of you who know the album, it needs no introduction. So I started by um, doing some swelling where you, I'm, so I'm clearly using the neck pickup here, and this is the uh, volume control here, and I'm rolling with my pinky. cello like um, effect I think you would agree and and, and Jan um, Ackerman used quite a bit of that now if you're not familiar with Jan's play I really like it because it's so melodical so he does do like a fusion jazz style but he's also did a very psychedelic uh, certainly on this album psychedelic uh, if you call it or uh, progressive if you think the year 19 I think they started in 68 under some different name and changed their name to uh, Focus. But if you think these guys were doing that um, 32, um, 56 years ago, is it uh, 32 and 24? We are 56 years ago. It's quite revolutionary. But what I like about this is music is uh, the melodic content of it. And, I, and I'll, I'll endeavor to do some numbers which are loosely based on it later. off and so I was playing this along this morning to a YouTube recording which Jan did actually earlier this year at a concert and um, I love his um, vibrato you know the way the way it's a note ring out and there's this one little section where he goes from the E to the um, to the fourth the A but he bends it up to the fifth intro, the E, the B, in E major now. the second, the F sharp, which is a whole tone above E. A 
when I hear the recording and I have the, the beautiful organ sound and the bass guitar giving me the canvas, you'll know what I'm trying to do. Now, um, I've probably still got too much. because I'm using a distortion pedal as well, so it's, I won't get a clean sound right now. But something that I found out this week, you know, when I came out of the military after two years, I hardly, I didn't hear a live band in that full two years, and I certainly heard very, very few numbers worth listening to on the local radio. And I was in childhood bands and that and playing Deep Purple uh, and all the popular songs, Pink Floyd, Black Sabbath, you know, jamming in garage bands. When I came out, I took, I took my uh, semi-acoustic guitar to the military, so I kept myself a little, as much as I could. I probably got 400 hours in the two years, you know, with the limited time I had to play guitar. When I came out, I, I, I joined a group and um, I was just astounded how things had changed between 1976 and 1979 when I joined the band in August. There was guys like Ian Drury and the Blockheads. There was um, Sid Vicious, Johnny Rotten, The Clash. Hey, great bands, the Jan. In fact, our band was modeled by our British leader on uh, the songs of the Jam, Paul Weller and the Jam. And and in the next two years, we went on to do our own songs, which very much uh, was influenced by the jam style music. <laughs> that uh, is a little riff I did for a song that I wrote for the band in 1979 called Coal Cell, but it actually came out of uh, C. Perhaps you were there at that New Year's Eve party of 1979-80 in a place called Buckhoven on the slopes of Table Mountain in Cape Town. We were asked to play to one o'clock and at, at 1.30 the, the plastic surgeon who threw the party at his seaside bungalow asked if we could play until 5.30. We had no hesitation regardless that it was raining. <laughs> the most money I ever made from music was that night. <laughs> and I bought myself a pair of platform uh, boots, platform heel boots. Anyway, back to Jan Ackerman. Later, if you watch my channel, Mike the Brain 5538, if you're on YouTube, uh, you're going to later or later in the week you'll see some jams. Now, during the week while I was jamming along with Jan uh, to, uh, on YouTube to the sound, because I love his, uh, as I said, I love his. I haven't got the right, right tone setting because he's playing quite a clean tone. But I found that on an acoustic guitar, without any electronic devices, I could more readily um, match his tone by moving my picking hand backwards and forwards from the bridge. And I found the sweet spot on an acoustic guitar where I could emulate the sound of Young just by getting the right harmonic quality from so that's a little trick you can bear in mind when you're looking for a certain quality that sounds like a sweet spot there yeah. just above the, the, the bridge pickup but i'm looking for more of that neck pickup sound a pedal on there and I might need to adjust the the uh, attack and sustain uh, controls to get the right sort of length sometimes I find if it's too much attack with sustain or vice versa you, don't, you you get an odd sort of sound so 
I, I need to work on that and I'll put my earplugs in after this and do some more research with the electric guitar on to how Young gets that, that special uh, vibrato. <laughs> you see him in, the, in his videos now that he's 78 you know. you'll also what i like about his live show i think it happened in january or february in holland what i like about it is you can actually see him make if you if you're a musician you'll pick up very small mistakes maybe young meant it intentionally but i love it because it makes it authentic look i hate to see these ripoff artists who play so smoothly and i know who agrees with that on me even though it was said 10 15 years ago is Deep Purple's guitarist, Richie Blackmore, one of my most influential players in my time. Not that I can play like him, but it, he had the most impact on me, more so than Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath, although I loved the music. That was my first long playing record, and indeed my first seven single I ever bought with my own pocket money. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have neither of those albums now in my small collection of vinyl records that I still maintain till this day. But what I uh, want to talk to you about, um, when we're talking about playing fast and slow, you know what happened was I stopped um, the vibra playing vibrato style. <laughs> basically uh, 18 years old um, because I had a semi-acoustic guitar and I was just playing all sorts of things like strumming up <laughs> for the guys in, in the army with me like so that is the sort of stuff the guys have a couple of beers on a Friday night and I can post a photo if you want me to with the sergeant sitting on the edge of my military bed and listening to me howling away because I'm not a singer by the way if you watch my channel but I just entertain myself and I entertain you because I have no um, I have no ambitions to be a singer and I have no shame in it's the only God given voice I've got anyway so what happened was I, when I joined the New Wave band, I didn't play vibrato anymore because the songs were like Joe Jackson. Joe Jackson, the black and white shoes. Well, guess what? I was Mick Muck and I also wore black and white shoes and the uh, bottle green um, uh, velvet jacket, as did Stu Slick, the lead singer and rhythm and guitarist. Now, maybe you remember us from uh, some of the gigs we did at the Claremont Civic Centre, Mowbray Town Hall, or in Cape Town, Club 1886 in uh, Long Street. Long Street? Yep. 1886 Long Street, uh, sort of a very progressive punk club. Um, and um, and then we played it was at uh, Rondebosch Town Hall I think and we played that as our opening number that night uh, Joe Jackson's um, One More Time photos where there's a guy in a wheelchair now short of the the, the wolf mothers act here in sydney where they the crowd picked the guy in the wheelchair up and put him above their shoulders i love that video of wolf mother um you know the song hell of a rocking song sort of led zeppelin based guitarist with his uh, robert plant hairstyle and you know and um and just can't think of the song's name now but um but this this was 19 uh 78 97 yeah 1978 it was just before christmas and um there's this fellow in the wheelchair had been in a car accident he was probably only about 16 years old 
and uh, all his mates of 15, 16 years old were pushing him around and they brought him to the stage and shook his hand and because um, we played those songs and jam bass songs like uh, uh, what's it? Uh, something about da 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 oh, the jam da 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 and we did some of those covers, but then we very progressively in the next four months formed our own songs. And I was one of the key songwriters along with Stu Slick and um, of the band's material, uh, like No, 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 Never, Stu wrote. Uh, it was a popular one of ours. There was Cold Cell and um, The Bullshitter, of course. <laughs> sort of a reggae ska beat to it. Oh, it's, you know, we, we're going back a while in time now, and I can't remember uh, that much. I'm almost 66 now, you know, but... Um, and where am I at right now? Uh, only the Lord knows. If you watch my channel, you know that um, I've done a huge amount of research, especially the last eight years. Now, I'm talking about... About like twelve to fourteen thousand hours of playing and research in eight years. I've gone crazy, and I'm very happy with what's happening. I'm not certainly never going to be the world's best guitarist, but I'm fulfilling a teenage dream. And uh, thank you for watching and encouraging me, because as at this morning, I had seven hundred and eighty-one subscribers. Come the fourth of December, two thousand and twenty-four, it's only been two years since I had six subscribers to seven hundred eighty-one, and I really appreciate. You guys are edging me on. Sometimes you'll see me playing with a few mates here. I've got a drum set. I've got a bass um, kit here. We've got, we've got everything going. And I, I'll loop. And when you see me howling away, I'm not the vocalist, but I'm the only one. Because the drummer can't. He's got a great voice, but he can't sing and play drums. But I'm getting him into it. So you'll see in my videos. There is a mic rigged up now for him to sing when he does pitch up. We only get together a few times because most of us are on the wrong side of uh, 60 more closer to 70 so we're moving on except the young the young the youngster the drummer he's only fifth, just turned 50 and then i play with my son-in-law he's a chicken at 38 or 39 and yeah i think he's 38 years old and then um and then sometimes you'll see my wife of 63 giving it a smash she's no drummer but she loves joining me occasionally down here in the next music room so i like doing some weird things like uh, this um little um, series based off um, minor third intervals so i'm starting at uh, the fourth fret i'm ending up at the 11th fret and i'm, I'm essentially my starting notes of that sequence are on the E, D, and B string at the 4th fret and then on the 5th fret of the A, G, and E. And sometimes I should put a bit of distortion on for that one. Yeah, it's it's those wide interval Alan Holdsworth inspired wide interval licks. So you play every minor third interval, which means you're skipping two frets. But I'm playing it on all five strings, and therefore I get this. Sorry. Now they, they, that's a common mistake of mine. When I go from the A from the D to the G string, I tend to want to play the B note there at the 4th fret, but it's actually the C. So then, I identify that, I'm playing that F major 7 chord, like a D7, you know, down there. So practice where your weakness lies. So that I've got this... Just get your hand used to doing that. Try two at a time. Because that's what I did. 
until I've got it. Hopefully I'll get it. I find that when the music's going, I do it a lot more relaxed. Or when you try, if you've done videos before, you know that when you're trying to show someone something, you tend to make mistakes. So there you go. And go slower. thinking it. Now I'm going to show you this one where you, you're playing um, sort of a notes of A minor, G, which is the major seventh to the A. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about when I do these things, please go back on my channel. Things like wide interval licks, intervals, lesson, guitar lessons 1.0.1, 101 in other words, 1.0.1, .1. guitar lessons, Mike the Brain 5538 actually shows you what all these little things and buttons and screws on electric guitar and acoustic guitar I explain the basics in a one hour video and I go right through to modes in that same hour. I'll take you through a huge amount of information. Some of my jams are good, I'm told, and some are not so good. But it's up to you to go check it out. There's over 13 or 1400 videos up there, but I, some are short. Some of them are like two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. A lot of short ones, a lot of shorts, under one minute. But check them out, and I might whet your appetite, because if you're a better guitarist, you might be quite impressed with some of the stuff. Like one that's coming through for me now is like this. Well, I'm playing a D chord. I haven't got the sound effect set up like with chorus to make it sound more like an organ. But I'm playing chords with my fretting hand. But you go check that one out. I can't remember what it's called, but it's wacky or strange ideas that you can do on a guitar. Or you can say, so I wonder, I'll come back to that in a moment. Per string, and that's another lesson you want to check out if you're not familiar with it. I'm merely playing A minor, pentatonic, position one, combined with position two. That, so that's one, two, three, four, five, and when you get to if you were playing in E minor, you're starting in the second octave vertically i call that vertically and you can when you do that you're playing two octaves horizontally of position one of a minor pentatonic the one where most soloing starts and the position below that is known as position five five one okay Position five and position one, yeah. The third fret and the fifth fret, starting positions. You will be able to play 99% of your favorite rock and blues numbers, I promise you, because all the guys did it in the 60s. That simple little trick. Now remember, I played by ear, picking up the needle on the vinyl. You know what I mean by vinyl, if you're a youngster? Because I'm doing this show for those who are not familiar with these things. That's vinyl. Look, you might have seen your fathers or your grandfathers or your mothers. Or your bigger brothers. And you took the needle and you picked it up and you played that track over and over and over. Nowadays you rewind on your mobile phone. You watch some online platform. Okay. But um, there's a certain magic. Like... Led Zeppelin's guitarist, Jimmy Page, I don't know if you've ever seen his vinyl library at his home in London or wherever he lives. It's astounding. <laughs> He's got thousands of albums. And he claims there's a special sound they produce. And I agree with him. I still have my 1979 original turntable. It's in absolute mint condition. It's a Technics, if you know your equipment. 
and I've got a 400 RMS watt um, sound system and you'll see the vertical speaker standing. It's nothing to do with the guitar, it's to do with the stereo system in this room. I wanted to talk about five guitarists today that you may or may not be familiar with because a few of them I wasn't until a few years ago. And I know of other guitarists who are in their 70s that weren't familiar with names like Sean Lane. I felt embarrassed when I found out about Sean Lane. One of the greatest guitarists that ever lived. A rock, fusion, jazz style guitarist. Sean Lane from Memphis. You go check him out. He's to see sadly in his early 40s in the early 2000s, but you go check out his works of the 90s, 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. The guy is incredible, probably one of the fastest guitars that ever lived, but you go check it out for yourself on YouTube. And the next one, um, the group that I want to talk about just briefly, that brought me great joy as a youngster. I only found out about them when I was 18 years old in a military train because one guy had a cassette recorder and he had uh, In For The Kill album by Budgie. Man, I love that. <laughs> I need the backing music. But if you're familiar with the album, that comes from the number called Parents. So Budgie were a Welsh group, and I just can't think of the guitarist's name now. That's how obscure they were. But man, underrated. So check it out. In For The Kill is the album's name by Budgie. And then uh, I've got another album here lying next to me. One of my favorite uh, guitarists since, since the age of 17, when I was introduced to him by a late friend, who was a brilliant guitarist, and sadly he passed away three or four years ago from, uh, yeah, Big C. So this is the late Tommy Bowler, and I speak under correction, I think this is his second solo album, uh, it's called Private Eyes. That's a great album. My wife actually loves it till this day. I bought it in 1980, uh, 1982 when we got married. And she loves this album till this day. There's a song on here, it's called Busting Out for Rosie. We have a poodle, toy poodle called Rosie. So you check us out. But even the album that I was introduced to was um, by my late friend Raymond, guitarist and drummer, extraordinary. And he could sing really well. But actually, that guy was prodigy, but um, self-taught. But um, teaser, Tommy Bowen's debut album, teaser. You, a highly acclaimed album. But if you haven't heard of Tommy Bowen, by the way, he played for Deep Purple Mach um, Mach Three or Mach Four. You can correct me. I'll stand corrected on that. I don't want to lie to you. But he played with Deep Purple for eighteen months. Um, so there you go. You know, Joe Satriani also did a, um, a one-year stint uh, with Deep Purple as the lead guitarist. But um, he moved on as well. And of course, you know about Steve Morse, also a great guitarist. Um, and I'm just mentioning these names, Steve Morse, M-O-R-S-E, in case there are a few guys that haven't heard of these guys. I've actually seen Steve Morse play live um, with... Um, Deep Purple in the local um, theatre uh, where I grew up and went to high school. And, um, and the opening act was Uriah Heep, whose guitarist was uh, Mick, Mick Box. Now, let me tell you now, Mick Box stole the show. Sorry, Steve. Mick Box is a character and a half. Obviously a good guitarist. But man, he commanded that stage. He had the audience of 3,000 in that theater in the palm of his hand, including uh, including mine and my wife's. He's a character. Well done, Mick. I would uh, appreciate you coming all that way from the UK down to Cape Town back in the, the early 90s or mid-90s. And then um, 
So we've covered um, Jan Ackerman, just in principle, that you go check these names out and, and the band focus. But you go check out Jan's still performing in Holland, in, maybe in Europe, in Germany, at the age of 78. His music's very melodic and, and I classify him as a great master. Even though he's playing a lot of pentatonic, you'll know, guitarists know what I mean, but he's so melodic about it and his feel. Um, if, if you spend enough time, you can get a lot out of him. And then I covered um, the second one was, um, see the memories going here, but um, I've just covered to Tommy Boland, uh, the Budgie guitarist. Um, you want to check out Budgie's In For The Kill album, at least as a, as a good album, in my view, a very good album. Not that many songs on it, but a great album. And then um, I spoke about late Sean Lane. Now if you want, he's got a one hour lesson on technical skills. Look, the guy will blow your mind. Not every song so melodic, but his ability. And this brings me on to the bass guitarist of note I want to talk about. I um, want to tell you um, Jonas Halborg is a huge inspiration for me. I'm not a bass guitarist, but I tamper around with it. But Jonas Halborg's style, now he played for many years with Sean Lane. And the, you go check it out on YouTube. They've got many videos. A lot of the stuff wasn't released through Sean's recording company. Because Sean can play really, like this one. You know, that Alan Halsworth sort of style. Outside, wide interval stuff. He's... Um, Sean is an absolute master of it. Diminished scale, eh? When I get it right. Now I've got lessons on that as well, you know, where you... Now, um... Check out Jonas Halborg. He played at NAMM in 2020. He played in other years as well, but that guy's... You know, tapping bass and his melodic content and soulful bass playing is really worth checking out in my view. And I've been quite astounded that there's some fellows that haven't heard of some of these guitarists. I know it's corny if you have, but you'll be amazed. Um, I was speaking to a fellow and uh, he really knows his music and I mentioned the name of one of these guitarists and and to my astoundment, he said, hey, Mike, I was only five years old at the time. I didn't expect him to know. Because if you know, if your mother or father or grandfather or grandmother didn't play this stuff to you, how would you know? You know, before the internet anyway. So uh, that's why I thought I'll give these guys a special mention because they've brought so much joy into my life. And I was not aware of them in, until my, of some of these guys. Un, until my late 50s, like Halborg and Sean Lane. Two of the greatest guitarists, of bass guitar and guitarists, that's walked this planet, and still walks this planet, Jonas. I've never heard of them until about five, six years ago. So, have you got any comments? And a guy in Canada referred me to a band. I've never heard of them. They were an opening act for Rush, I think, in the 90s. I was blown. Very, very good guitarist, and I wouldn't have a clue what his name is, but... I tell you now, so you know the world is very unfair. If you are a guitarist, I want to just tell you, don't 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 give up hope. Eh? You know the way that the industry is structured and now is anything selling. You know, I once heard a, a credible um, review of the state of the music industry about five years ago by a professor of music, and he he commented that the uh, the global sales of Western music were like something like eighteen point four billion a year. In the year 2002 by something like 2018 that figure had fallen to 2.4 billion US dollars a year and you you can go online and see how many um, well respected musicians and musical teachers there are that are critical of the the music that's being made and being played in the mainstream I don't own a radio, 
I don't, my car radio is permanently switched off, so you're not going to reach me by radio. I watch YouTube, and that's the source of my music, and the other source of my music is right inside here, between these two wing nuts. So, you can go check my channel out, because I've been criticized of playing sometimes weird things and I get criticized when I play something that sounds like it's come out of 1962. So I know I can't please everyone, but if there's something you'd like to hear, please let me know. Or if you've got some ideas, send me to your sites and I can go see what you guys are up to because we all share ideas and so we should for the good of mankind. Um, for these trolls and idiots that are out there, thanks for watching, building up our hours. Because there's a lot of serious people out there. There's a lot of people who might even be incarcerated in a, in a penal colony. They might be lying sick with drips up their nose and their ears and every part of their body. And I like to think that some of these videos can give them hope. Because, you know, music gives you a huge amount of hope. Behind me is my olive tree I planted when it was about a meter tall. And I planted that in the year 2009 when the original Japanese cherry tree dried. Most beautiful Japanese blossom, cherry blossom tree. But it got a disease and died, so I planted this little one meter olive tree. It now stands four meters high. It's a symbol of peace, hope, and love, I feel. So I'm sitting here not preaching, but I want you to share the joy um, that I started down here in this little room that I call Mix Music. It's effectively the basement of my home with a window. And um, I was telling my wife last night, it's been almost 12 years. She said, yeah, I remember those times she didn't even barely come to bed. She'd be fast asleep. And I was a young man still, but, you know, at 54. And just in the last year, I can feel that my energy levels are going down. You know, you start getting all sorts of joint and orthopedic issues. But the good oh. news is it's not in my hands yet. So as long as these hands work, um, I'm going to be playing these guitars of mine and share my passion with you. So, um, I want to show you some more wide intervals now. Um, so we're going to go G, A. So we're calling this notes of A minor. So we've got the flat seventh to the root, the A. We're then going to go, so we're going five seven. Then we're going to go uh, five, seven, five, uh, five, nine, C, E, all notes of A minor pentatonic. Then we're going to go G, which is the eighth on the B string, and A. So it's wide, eh? I'm just skipping out a few notes of A minor pentatonic. So we go G A flat sevens to root minor third perfect fifth flat seven again root perfect fifth. Okay, so now you guys can start experimenting with stuff. basically said what I wanted to say. I've kept you busy for 40 minutes. I hope you enjoyed it. That used to be like one period uh, when I was at high school in the 70s. So we'll leave it at that then. 
I'll catch you in the next video. I'm going to now warm up and uh, go play some music. Thanks, thanks for viewing.